Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today our video is about radiologic signs of slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Introduction. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis or SCFE is one of the most common hip disorders in adolescents characterized by the displacement of the femoral head epiphysis relative to the femoral neck. This condition occurs when the gross plate physis weakens, allowing the epiphysis to slip in a posterior and inferior direction. Early detection is critical to prevent long-term complications like hip deformities and osteoarthritis. X-ray are the primary imaging modality used to diagnose SCFE and recognizing its characteristic signs can ensure timely and effective treatment. SCFE typically affects children during their growth spurts, most commonly between the ages of 10 and 16. Risk factors include obesity, hormonal imbalances such as in hypothyroidism or growth hormone disorders, and genetic predispositions. The condition is classified into stable or unstable SCFE, depending on the patient's ability to bear weight on the affected leg. Early and accurate diagnosis hinges on identifying K radiographic signs on X-rays, which help differentiate SCFE from other hip pathologies. K X-ray signs of SCFE include number one, climb the line, number two, widening of the vices, gross plate. Number 3. Posterior displacement of the femoral head. Number 4. Decreased epiphyseal height. Number 5. Metaphyseal blurring or remodeling. Number 6. Three sounds sign. Number 7. Steel sign. Number 1. Client's line. One of the earliest and the most reliable indicators of slipped capital femoral epiphysis is Klein's line, which is drawn along the superior edge of the femoral neck. In a normal hip, this line should intersect a portion of the femoral head. However, in cases of SCFE, the line fails to intersect the femoral head due to the slippage. This finding is often subtle in early stages, so careful attention is required. Here are Series of illustrations depicting a slip decapital femoral epiphysis ranging from normal to severe. The green line on the normal represents the line of Klein drawn on the superior edge of the femoral neck, intersecting the lateral aspect of the superior femoral epiphysis. Mild lateral edge of the epiphysis is within the lateral third of the metaphysis. Moderate Lateral edge between the lateral third and the halfway point of the metaphysis. Severe, medial third over the halfway point of the metaphysis. Number two, widening of the physis, cross plate. Another hallmark of SCFE on the X ray is the widening of the cross plate. This occurs because the epiphysis begins to separate from the metaphysis creating a visible gap. This widening is particularly noticeable on the anteroposterior views of the hip and is a strong indicator of slipped capital femoral epiphysis progression. Number 3. Posterior displacement of the femoral head. On the lateral X-ray view, one of the most significant signs is the posterior and the inferior displacement of the femoral head relative to the femoral neck. This shift gives the appearance of the ice cream slipping of the cone, where the rounded femoral head looks as so it is slipping of the neck of the femur. A slipped capital femoral epiphysis of the left hip is shown on the radiograph. The relationship of the femoral head to the neck after a slip 
has been likened to an ice cream scoop falling off its cone. Number four, decreased epiphyseal height. A less commonly discussed but important finding is a reduction in the height of the femoral epiphysis. As the slip progresses, the height of the femoral head becomes flatter and less rounded. This is best visualized on the frog leg lateral view of the hip. Number 5. Metaphyseal blurring or remodeling. In chronic cases of SCFE, remodeling changes in the metaphysis may be visible. Blurring of the metaphyseal edge and the development of cystic changes or sclerosis near the physis can suggest long-standing slippage, which often necessitates more extensive treatment. Number 6. Trisound's sign. Trisound's sign is similar to Klein's line, but emphasizes drawing the line along the superior margin of the femoral neck. If this line doesn't intersect any part of the femoral head, it suggests a slippage. It is another early indicator often used to confirm the diagnosis. Number 7. Steel sign. Anthroposterior X ray reveals a double density at the metaphysis due to the posterior lip of the femoral head overlapping with the metaphysis. Radiographic views used in slipped capital femoral epiphysis diagnosis. To ensure an accurate diagnosis, specific radiographic views are recommended. Number 1. Anthroposterior view. The anthroposterior view provides a frontal image of the pelvis and hips, useful for assessing a client's line and the overall structure of the hips. Number 2. Frog leg lateral view. This view is essential for evaluating the posterior displacement of the femoral head, a key sign of SCFE. It also helps in assessing the height of the epiphysis and the extent of the slip. Both views are crucial as the slippage may not always be apparent on a single X-ray angle. A combination of both is typically required for accurate detection of slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Differentiating slipped capital femoral epiphysis from other conditions SCFE can sometimes be confused with other conditions like leg calvi birth disease or hip dysplasia. However, the distinctive X-ray signs, particularly Klein's line and the ice cream slipping of the cone appearance, are unique to SCFE. Awareness of these specific radiologic finding helps clinician make the correct diagnosis and distinguish SCFE from other pediatric hip disorders.